Hi there! This is how to install an ATX 3.0 power supply. For this tutorial we will be using a fully modular GF3 ATX 3.0 power supply. Your first step will be removing everything from the packaging and laying it out. Now I'm going to run you through each cable, what it looks like and what it does. First up, this is your 24 pin cable. This is your motherboard connector cable. If you're using an older motherboard, you may only have 20 pins, but this isn't too common anymore. Next is your CPU cable. This helps provide power to your CPU. These cables tend to look similar to standard PCIe cables, but please make sure you're using the correct cable for the correct part. You can do this by either checking if it has CPU written on it, like it does here, or it might also split down the middle, as only CPU cables can do this. You might not have these cables, however if you do, these are Molex cables. These are used to power accessories such as RTT fan controllers. You can tell these apart from other cables due to their really unique look. They're also a, a bit of a pain to install sometimes. Next we have SATA cables. These are commonly used to power hard drives and SSDs, as well as other things like controllers. Now these are PCIe cables. These look very similar to CPU cables. In previous gen power supplies, these were used to power up your graphics card, but now they're reserved for other power-hungry expansion cards. As I mentioned before, if you are using one of these, please remember to check that it is indeed a PCIe cable and not a CPU cable. The new kit on the block, this is the 12 volt high power cable. This is the new ATX 3.0 graphics card connector and is used to provide next gen cards with enough power to run nice and smooth. To start off, let's plug all of these into the power supply. If you have a semi or non-modular power supply, please feel free to skip to the time shown somewhere on the screen, because not all this information will be necessary for you. There isn't really any set order to plug these in, so to keep things nice and simple, I'm going to be installing the cables from top to bottom and left to right. First, you're going to want to install your 12 volt high power cable in the top left slot. This can then be followed by either your CPU or PCIe cables. These can also be inserted on the bottom left, depending on what works best for your cable management. Next, you can insert your SATA or Molex cables as required. And finally, in the bottom right, pop in that chunky 24-pin motherboard cable. Now, time to plug all these into your motherboard. Beginning with your 24 pin cable, this is pretty much located in the same place in every single motherboard, which will be off to the right hand side of your board. Your CPU cable will often need to be plugged in somewhere in the top left of the board. The connector itself can also split if your board only takes four pins, such as with an MATX board, but for everything ATX and above like this one, you're going to need all eight pins inserted into the motherboard. Now we're going to pop in this graphics card we prepared earlier, and this is where your 12 volt high power cable will need to plug in. The port will be just located along the front of the card. Your SATA cables plug into your hard drives or connectors just like so. And finally, saving the best for last, Molex. Now these can be a little tricky, so just try and line it up as best as you can because the pins can be a bit loose and move around a little bit. So, there's your breakdown on where all your power supply cables need to end up. Do a little bit of cable management now to tame the jungle of cables you may have. And that's it. You've successfully installed your ATX 3.0 power supply. If you have any questions or tips for your fellow PC builders, feel free to chuck them in the comment section down below. And thank you everyone for watching. See ya.